Hey friend, as a product designer, we're often responsible for designing screens, user flows, and product experiences. And while we often design these statically in a tool like Figma, rarely are these products static in real life. Your product may have interactive elements like input fields, interactions, animations, and more. Now this stuff can be really tricky to document statically in your design tool, which is why prototyping is such a valuable skill and part of the design process. Framer lets you design exactly how your design works through advanced yet easy to use prototyping. It's an all-in-one tool that helps design teams with every part of the product experience. You can build and use real components and also design closer to the way that things are being built in real life. Framer lets you create smart components with interactive variants. You can also create micro interactions and ultimately create beautiful animations and lifelike products. And when you're designing these interactive components, there is no need for code. Okay, here we are in Framer and we're going to build this sort of SaaS app prototype and I already have the designs and we're just gonna bring it to life via prototyping. So let's preview it. You can see that we have these interactive input fields and I'm actually typing into these fields. I can type whatever I want. I can check this checkbox and I can switch to sign up if I want to, but let's sign in. And then we have this dashboard page, which is a long scrolling page. I can also go to this task page and there's some interactive components here where I can check this box to select tasks and then I can also create a task which is going to bring up a modal I can type my task here uh, in box zero let's say and then I also have a drop down uh, which is kind of like a input drop down here that I can then create okay so let's get started so over here on this page I have the screens that I'm going to use to create this prototype now let's start by actually connecting the sign in and sign up now you would have seen earlier that you can actually switch to sign up from the sign in screen and vice versa so I'm going to do this by creating an interaction between these two pages. So up the top here, I'm going to select interaction and let's make this one go to the sign up page. And then I can select the kind of interaction I want. So in this case, I want on tap, let's do a flip to the sign up screen and let's do the reverse of that as well so that we can kind of flip back and forth between the two screens. This CTA here is used throughout the prototype. So let's turn this into a component. I'm just gonna drag it up here for now off the screen and turn it into a component by clicking on the component button in the top. Let's call this uh, CTA button. Create. Now this is going to bring us into our sort of component view where you can now add variants or hover or press states for this particular component. Variants are kind of like other styles. So if you wanted to add a secondary style of button at the moment, this is my primary button. Maybe you have a secondary or tertiary style of the button. I'm not going to do that for this one. However, I am going to add a pressed state. This is a mobile app, so hover is not necessary, but let's add a press state of this button and let's just make the blue slightly darker so that when you're pressing on the button, the color changes. And we can test that immediately in here by previewing this button. And you can see now when I press on this button, it goes to our press state and see how it kind of fades into that state really nicely. I didn't need to add any kind of particular customizable transition. Framer knows that that I'm going from a primary to a press state of the button and it automatically adds this really smooth transition. Now I'm going to be placing this button throughout multiple places within my prototype and I'm going to want the copy of this button to be slightly different depending on where I place it, right? We don't need to have it say sign in in every instance. So what I want to do is I want to make this text an editable field within this component so that when I'm placing it in my design, I can edit the text from that level. And we can do that by turning the text field into a variable. So to do that, I'm going to select the text and then over here in the text properties for this component under content where it says sign in, I'm going to click on the plus button that shows here on hover in purple. Now when I do that, it's going to create a variable for this particular text field. Let's call this button text. And now we have specified that within this component, the text of this button 
is a variable. So if we go back to our prototype, let's delete this one because we want to replace it with our newly created component. So from the component section here, I can drag in the CTA button that we just created. And you'll see here over in the right hand side, the variables for this particular component. And in this case, we have the button text, which we specified. So I can edit this text here to say whatever I want. Maybe I want it to say sign in, sign up, maybe I want to say done. For this one, let's do sign in because we're placing this button on the sign in screen. And then let's duplicate it over to the sign up page and let's call it sign up. So you can add a variable to almost any property within a component. In this case, I've added it to the text field, but there might be other things you want to add a variable to as well. All right, now that we have our CTA button, let's put in some input fields. If you remember when I showed you the prototype earlier, you could actually type in your username and password. Now we're going to do this by going up to the insert menu up here and look for input. And frame is going to give you a sort of automatically default input field that you can then use and edit as you wish. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this input field into a component so that we can work with it. So I'm going to just change a few things in regards to the properties of this component uh, to match kind of the design that I want to use. Okay, so there's a couple of variables that I want to add to this component before we can use it in our design. Now, Framer actually lets you specify what kind of input field this is. For example, if it's a regular text input field or maybe it's for a password, like you saw what I showed you in the prototype earlier when I was typing in my password, it was being typed in with the dots. So let's make that a variable so that we can specify to Framer when we're putting in our input, which kind of input field we want. So for password, let's make this a variable. One other variable I want to add is the ability to overwrite the default text. So we don't want it to say type something everywhere. We want that to be contextual. So let's make the placeholder text a variable as well. Now, if I go back to my design and drag that text input into our design, let's place it here like we want. And here you can see I can specify if this is a password field, true or false. And I can also type something. So for this one, I know that it's for entering the email address and then let's also add the input field here for password and now if we preview this we can type in here our email and then we can also type in our password just like that which is great so I'm going to add these input fields over to our other screen as well Great, now we have our input fields here. I want to add an interactive checkbox for the keep me logged in and accept terms of service. So let's go back to the insert menu, which has a lot of different things that you can search for that Framer has a sort of default interactions you can use. And let's look for checkbox. Great, so let's insert this checkbox here. And this checkbox by default is already pre-animated. So I can already immediately interact with it that quickly without having to do any sort of configuration or customization. So I'm gonna add that over to the screen as well. All right, I think that's our sign and sign up page. Let's test it. So we can add in our email address. We can also do our password. We can check the box. We can switch to the other screen and do exactly the same thing here. Super simple and smooth. That was barely any work on my part to create any of those interactions. Okay, next, let's look at the dashboard page, which if you remember is a long scrolling page. Now, if I were to just preview this right now, it kind of shows as this one long page, right? But we want to kind of have it match the viewport of our device. So to do that, I'm going to add a frame here into Framer to kind of match the size of my screens. All right, next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move all of the sticky components. So in this case, the status bar, as well as the navigation footer at the bottom, I'm gonna move that over to my frame. 
Next, I want to create the scrollable area. So up here, you can click on scroll and then I'm just going to drag and create the size of the scroll viewpoint that I want for this particular screen. And now all I need to do is actually connect this arrow to the screen that has the content for my scrollable screen. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of some of this extra area at the top now that we actually moved the content. So you can see now I've connected that scrollable sort of container to this long page that has all of our content and Framer actually already pulled it in here on the screen, but let's test it here in preview mode. Nice, so we've got our sticky elements of our header and footer because we moved them onto the frame and we have all of the scrolling content that is kind of defined by this long scrolling screen. So super easy to manage and just quickly link up that scrollable viewport area to the content that you want to pull in. So one thing we need to add is how we get to this dashboard screen. So let's go back up to our sign up screens and after the user clicks on sign and sign up, I actually want to take them to this dashboard screen. So I can do that by clicking on the button and then clicking on the little lightning rod there to create the transition and interaction between screens. So let's do a tap and in this one, let's actually do a push animation and I'm going to do the same for the sign up. All right, and make sure you're taking your user to the, the frame, not the full scrollable area content. So now that I've linked those, let's go back to preview. And if I click sign in, nice, that takes us right back to our dashboard. And I think it's the same from if we switch to sign up. All right, so that takes us to our dashboard and you see because I chose a push, it does that push animation really nicely between those two screens. Next, let's take a look at the tasks screen. So if you remember, there is a list of tasks here for this screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn this frame into a component that we can then sort of repeat throughout the list. So I'm gonna select it and then I'm going to turn this into a component and call it task item. Let's create that. And then I actually want to add in my checkbox into this component as well so that the user can actually select which tasks they want to interact with. So again, from the insert screen, I'm adding my checkbox in here. And if we preview this, you can see that this checkbox is immediately interactive. Now, this little label is a component I already created earlier. If I click into this, you can see I actually have different states uh, for different status updates, if it's like in draft, completed or overdue. So I'd already created that and then added that component here into this task. And you can see that I also created those statuses as a variable so I can actually change the state of the status right here in this component. Now with this task, I want to add two variables. So the first is the status of the task and the second is the text content of the task itself so that I can edit this from my design level. So let's click on the status here and let's turn that into a variable called status. And then let's click on the text content and turn that into a variable as well. And now if I were to go back to this top level, I can actually change the status of this task from here as well as the task content itself, just like that. Okay, I also want to add another variant. So when the user actually selects the checkbox, we have a slightly different style for this uh, component. So let's do the background fill as maybe kind of like a slight blue so that we know when it's been selected. And let's also make the default state of this unselected so that when we have this list here, it is unselected by default. Okay, so now I have my two variants for this task. I have the sort of unselected state and then the selected state. And if we preview, you'll see when I select it, we get that selected state with the darker background. Let's go back to our prototype. And now that we have this component, we can actually duplicate this component and fill out the rest of our list. Okay, I don't want all of these to look the same, so I'm going to make some of these a little bit different. And now if we preview our design, you can see that I can tap and interact with these tasks. Okay, let's add our button here as well to create a new task. So I'm gonna add this in and I'm gonna call this 
create task. And when the user taps on this button, I want it to bring up this create task modal. Now to do this, I don't need to design this modal on top of this design itself, like you maybe would in something like Figma, but instead I can just create an interaction from this button to this modal and actually specify the animation as a modal animation. So now if we preview it and click on the create task button, you'll see that it brings up that modal in a really, really nice animation. I didn't need to add any of that sort of opacity layer in the background. Framer just kind of does the animation for you depending on the type of animation you specify, which is great. Okay, I'm gonna add an input field and button to this modal and then I'm gonna show you how to do drop downs. Okay, so for type and assign to, I wanna make this a drop down and Framer already has predefined drop down elements for you to use. So under insert, just search for drop down and we can insert that right here into our design. Now I'm gonna edit this just a little bit so that it matches our design. Okay, I've customized the design a little bit of my dropdown. Now let's actually add our dropdown options and you can do that here on the right and scrolling down to options. I'm gonna add two options here, either it's gonna be a task or a reminder. And if I preview this now, you will see that I can click on this and Framer automatically brings up the sort of system default for this particular dropdown. So you can see we've kind of got the iOS style dropdown here and I can choose between the two different options that we just set. I'm gonna do the same for this assign to and add a few different people here as different options as to who to assign this task to. All right, so now if we see this model, we can add a task like edit video. We can choose whether the task type is a task or a reminder. Then you can also choose here who you want to assign it to. Okay, so now we've got all of our screens and we've got our interactions. The last thing we're missing is connecting our navigation here to the different pages. So this navigation is actually a component that I've already created. And if I click into it here, you can see that it's just a component with different variants and there's a variant for each menu item within that navigation. And this is actually all connected up with interactions as well to kind of navigate you through this component. So that if, for example, I clicked on here, the people icon, this component changes to reflect the different page that I'm trying to navigate to. With that said though, I do have this placed in my design. However, if I were to preview this now and click on the navigation bar, you'll see that it doesn't actually change the page. And that's because I haven't configured this component yet to our design here at the top level. So what I wanna do is when I'm on this dashboard page, I wanna make it so that when the user clicks on the task icon, they go to this task page. So to set this up, I'm gonna click on this navigation bar and in the top right under interactions, I'm gonna add a transition. And I want it so that when the user taps on this task sort of icon, which I've called menu, uh, to take the user to our tasks page. And let's just make that a instant transition. And then I'm gonna do the same here on the task page. So select the navigation bar and I'm gonna add the transition so that when the user taps on the home icon, they will be taken back to home. So now if I preview this, we'll see that I'm on the dashboard home page. And if I click on the tasks, I get taken to the tasks page. And now if I click on home, I get taken back to that home dashboard so I can toggle between these different pages. And you can set that up for other pages in the prototype. You may have pages for these other icons as well, these other pages here in your design. And you just simply link them by clicking on that navigation component and then adding that transition interaction to that particular page in your design. Okay, now let's preview the whole thing. So let's go back to the beginning and you can see that we have these input fields. We have the password, we can toggle this on and off, we can switch between sign in and sign up. If we sign in, we have our scrolling page here with the dashboard and we can click on tasks, we can select tasks, we can also create a task here by typing our task in using the drop down to configure the type of task, who it's assigned to, and that is our interactive prototype. From here, you can also preview this on your mobile device by clicking up here on mobile, and just with your phone, you can scan the QR code and preview this interactive prototype 
right on your phone as if it were a real live app. Okay friend, and that is Framer, a really smart, robust, interactive prototyping tool that's gonna take your designs to the next level. If you wanna get started with Framer today, click on the link in the description and I'd love to see what you end up creating. Feel free to leave a share link in the comments and I'll check out your prototype. Have a great day, see you next time.